One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. We are supported by Riverside. How much time do you spend thinking about recording and editing your podcast? Now, I know you've been sweating over the fact that you aren't an audio engineer or that you say the word um too much. And let's be real, it's cutting into your plans to make more money with your content. But I've got something that will make your podcast life a whole lot easier and leave more time for strategy and planning. Introducing Riverside, the podcast editing and recording solution that's so good, it'll make your podcast sound like it was produced by angels, or at least a podcast pro like me. Because picture this, you're recording your latest episode and suddenly your co-host Wi-Fi craps out. Riverside won't break a sweat. It's got your back with seamless remote recording so you can have crystal clear conversations no matter where your guests are. Trust me, I've tried it and it's like podcasting magic. And let's talk about editing, shall we? Because Riverside's editing tools are as user-friendly as a puppy in a room full of squeaky toys. You don't need to be an audio engineer to make your podcast sound amazing. Even my dog Wally could figure it out if he had thumbs. I love it when I open my calendar and see that hosts are using Riverside to record their content because it's like a deep exhale knowing that our conversation will be recorded in the highest quality and be super easy to use. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Riverside and enter promo code crystal for an exclusive 15% discount. That's right. You're going to save some serious cash while elevating your podcasting game to new heights. So what are you waiting for? Try Riverside today and let's turn your podcast into a binge worthy sensation. Again, go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Riverside. Use code crystal for 15% off. That's crystal crystalprofit.com forward slash Riverside. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. Content automation. I know it's a sexy term, right? When you can sit there and think, all I have to do is record my content and then 
everything else happens like magic. Like, doesn't that sound so incredible? Well, that is exactly what we are talking about today with my guest, Joe. So Joe and I met at Craft and Commerce and we had so much fun. And this is one of those, I think I've talked about it multiple times here on the show that this was probably the event of the year that helped me meet so many incredible people from podcasters, content creators, people that are doing really incredible things in the content creator space. But Joe specifically, I actually had two or three people say, hey, you need to meet Joe. Hey, let me connect you with Joe whenever I told him I was a podcast coach because Joe is a podcast automation coach who helps busy solopreneurs grow their podcast into authority building lead generators. So Joe is an expert at creating automations to help people take work off of their plate and improve their podcast processes because I mean, just get ready. This is such a fantastic interview. We talked about how Joe and I would absolutely be on each other's team for trivia night. Like we get into some interesting topics that I cannot wait for you to hear our whole conversation. So please enjoy my interview with Joe Casabano. Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? All right, Profit Podcast listeners, I have an extra special guest today. Joe, welcome to the show. I am so happy that you are here. How are you? I'm great, Crystal. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm stoked to be here to talk podcasting, automation, all that fun stuff, all the things that light me up. Yes, yes. So Joe and I met, you know, I gave like a brief introduction in the intro about Joe and I meeting at craft and commerce earlier this summer. And it was so fun. I was trying to remember all of the things that we talked about. It was like a happy hour. And we were like, you know, chit chatting about all the things, but I realized very quickly that Joe and I should be trivia night partners because the pop culture, like we would crush it. Absolutely crush it. What were all the shows we were talking about? I don't even remember now. (laughs) There was there. I mean, like I can go through, it was such a whirlwind. First of all, this will always be like a weird claim to fame for me because Amy Porterfield introduced us, which is just really weird to say. Because yes. <laughs> uh, like that was the first time I had ever met her in real life too. So like, um, so it was just like a wild evening. Uh, I think we caught each other walking somewhere else at another time. But uh, s- like Scrubs and How I Met Your Mother and Friends are always like the ones I'm talking about. Yes. Um, yes. And, you know, it's funny as we record this, uh, someone else that I hung out with a lot at craft and commerce tweeted like hey thanks for all the great uh connections i made at craft and commerce shout out to and then like he tagged me and said for his like seemingly infinite movie and lyric knowledge i'm like yes (laughs) this is i made the right impact like it's always nice to get recognized (laughs) for these things I think it was, we went into like a full blown debate and I don't even know how we got there. Like, it was just like, Hey, how's it going? I'm Crystal. I'm Joe. And then all of a sudden we were in this heated debate over game of Thrones versus house of the dragon. And I mean, it was just like immediately talking about all things and it was so much fun. So that's how it will always be solidified in my brain that we just need to be trivia night buddies because we, we could, we would rule, we would absolutely rule the whole thing. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. And I'm totally down for that. <laughs> we'll have to make it happen. Yes. But we'll we'll, we, we'll organize a, another one at Craft and Commerce next time. Yes, that would be yeah. so fun. Okay, we're going to like, hang on, let's bookmark that. We're going to like <laughs> send a message to them later and be like, yeah. this is a request. This hey, needs to yes. happen. Let's do a trivia night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I have you on the show today to talk about podcasting and automation. And I was telling you before we started recording that I know that this audience has been hearing about AI and chat GPT and all the things. And 
they really love the idea of having AI and having automations and just thinking about processes and then poof, they're done. They happen for you. But the idea of setting everything up feels so overwhelming. So I was just curious if you could just kind of walk us through how you got into automations in the first place. Like, do you have a story? Like, was there this like one day where you're like, I'm going to throw my whole computer against the wall because of this one thing that's been like, (laughs) do you have any stories like this? Yeah. So I was running a webinar a while ago uh, at this point and someone asked, uh, I I mentioned that I have three podcasts and that I also have three children. And they were like, how can you possibly run three podcasts with three children? And it's it's because of my automations. And so my daughter was born in 2017, uh, in in March of 2017. I quit my full-time job in uh, June of 2017. So my wife was just hitting the maternity leave where like you don't get paid. And I was quitting my full-time job and we had a baby at home. Uh, and I was trying to kind of do it all. Like kids don't change things that much. Right. Um, <laughs> and when my wife went back to work, we hired a babysitter. So things were going pretty well uh, until my babysitter had to leave for the summer. She would go away to a different state and do like a summer long camp counselor thing. And that's when the wheels started to fall off the bus a little bit <laughs> uh, because my wife was working uh, three 12 hour shifts at the hospital a week. And we didn't really have consistent child care. And we went through a bunch of different babysitters. And I was like, if I'm going to properly run my business, something's got to change. So Uh, my friend challenged me to take things off of my plate. And what he meant and what I heard were two different things, right? What he meant was do fewer things. And what I heard was make robots do some of those things, right? (laughs) Um, And so I started to automate a little bit. I started automating simple things, right? Booking guests, uh, for example. I should also mention at this point, my podcast was a, a pretty appreciable part of my income. It was probably like 30% of my income at the time. Uh, And so I definitely didn't want that to fall by the wayside. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to start automating a few things. I'm going to outsource a couple of things like editing uh, and getting the show published and and little things here and there. Right. Um, So I moved everything into Airtable, started automating that more. Then I was like pretty happy for a while. Right. Because then like my my daughter was going to daycare. And we had no more children for a little while. Uh, And then a funny thing happened in March 2020. Mm. My wife was pregnant with our second. uh, And since she is a nurse, she wasn't one of the people who got to just stay home. And the daycare closed. And so I went from working full time at home to working two or three days a week. And that that was really the solidifying point for me right there was one point where i was just like so overwhelmed with the work that wasn't getting done and we still needed my income and my wife wasn't home and i had a little bit of a panic attack and i remember this because my three-year-old came over to me with a bottle of water and a towel and was like it's okay daddy and i'm like my three-year-old should not be doing this and that's when i was like you know what i'm hiring a va I'm automating as much as possible. So I'm here to tell you, don't get to that point. <laughs> you, yeah. you don't have to get to that point. But we welcomed our third in December 2021. And I was able to take a month off. And everything ran smoothly because I had things already recorded. And during that point, like March, uh, April, May 2020, I got my podcast process to a system where once I was done recording, I was done, done, Mm -hmm. done. So, uh, you know, it was like nothing changed after my third game and after my first game and after my second game, there was a lot of things I had to move around. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. 
I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. I mean, for you to say that all you do now today is record and then you're done. Like, I feel like somebody is listening right now and their jaw just hit the floor. Like, wait, what? Because so many of my listeners are just getting started and maybe they're in the first six to 12 months of their show. And they're like, they're doing all the things right now, Joe. They're like, okay, I have to plan it. I have to edit it. I have to record it. I have to upload it to Buzzsprout. Then I have to market it and do the Canva graphics. And then I have to like, I have to book the guest and do all the things. So to hear that, I hope that whoever's listening and had that jaw dropping moment that, you know, first of all, this is possible, but also that you can let go of some of these things that you're hanging on to so tightly. So I'm curious for you, like, what's the very last thing that you outsource? Not the first, but the very last mm. thing that you're like, I'm going to hang on to this. Like, oh, I don't trust an, you know, a VA or a bot just yet. I'm going to hang on to this. What was that for you? Publishing my podcast. Mm. I was like, it's a WordPress site. It's not the easiest. There's a couple of steps. Only I can do that. Guess what? As long as you record the process for somebody and write down the steps, anybody can do, anybody who knows how to use a mouse and a keyboard can do that. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And somebody needed to hear that. And I think it's one of those that's like, oh, it's so true. Why do we do this? Why do we do this to ourselves? Like once we figure out a process and it's something that we learned from somebody else in the first place, whether it was yeah. you paid somebody to figure out how to do it, or you watched a YouTube video, somebody else taught you to do the thing. Yet when it's our show, all of a sudden we have this ownership of, but nobody could do it just like I do it. Therefore I don't trust anybody. So how long do you typically see like when someone comes to you and says, Joe, I want you to help me. Are you typically helping brand new podcasters or people that already kind of have systems in place and they just need your help to guide things along? Like, what does that typically look like for you? Yeah. So I usually get people post launch. They've been doing it for a little while, maybe, maybe six months, maybe a year. Uh, and they're getting to a point where they're either going to stop being consistent or they're going to burn out. Mm. And and they come to me and they're like, you have three kids and run three podcasts and presumably do other things. Um, how do you, how do you do it? Right. And some people it's it's helped me with my process. For some people, it's helped me make money so that mm -hmm. I can actually hire an editor yeah. uh, and and get to a point where I can start outsourcing. Um, and then for some people, it's like it's like you're playing nine dimensional chess. Just do it for me. Yeah. And I, then I don't have to think about it after I record. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Well, I'm curious, what are some of the monetization strategies that you love for podcasters? So I, so, I mean, everybody thinks I have a framework. I can run through this really quick. It's called the smash framework. Um, and it's, I want to give a shout out to Justin Moore, who's like, who uses acronyms for everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I guess I should have an acronym. Um, so the first S is sponsorship, right? That's the most obvious one. I think to a lot of people, a brand pays you to talk about them on your show. I like this for most people. If you're willing to put in the time and do the outreach and, you know, get told no a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but for some people, there's like this mental hurdle that I don't have enough downloads, so I can't have enough sponsors. I'll just, we'll take this and put a pin in it, but I have, again, all three of my podcasts were sponsored with zero downloads. Like I had sponsors before the show launched. So I think alignment is more important there, but that's the S. M is membership. So people pay you some uh, nominal fee monthly or annually to get access to more content or add free content, exclusive co content or access. Uh, so I have a membership that is ad-free extended episodes of my podcast where usually the last 10 minutes for members only are the, the juiciest, you know, of the interview. 
uh, and the free stuff is still really, really valuable. And my listeners get actionable advice, but we go a little deeper, right? I just interviewed an Emmy award winning producer and we talked about storytelling in the main show. And then I was like, all right, for the members, tell me what it's like winning an Emmy. Yeah. I will never get to ask anybody else this question. Yes. So I like that you do need, you don't need a big audience, but you definitely need an enthusiastic and engaged audience for that. Uh, so that's M a is affiliate links easiest to get into. Maybe the hardest to make real money from the strategy for that. I recommend you pick two or three products and really promote them. Make it clear that you're using an affiliate link, but talk about them on your show, have an easy to remember link, put them in the show notes, mention them as much as you can and make them good. Like Amazon affiliates ain't going to cut it right. Mm -hmm. 3% on clicks, mm, but like, 30% recurring for two years, like ConvertKit has or whoever, um, that's going to be a good affiliate program. So that was SMA. The second S is help. I'm sorry. The second S is sell. And the last and the H is help. This is where I like to help people the most because these are solopreneurs, small business owners. They are selling a product or they're selling uh, help, which is coaching, consulting, courses, and they need to establish their authority. Because I think a podcast is the best way to do that. The best way to develop, um, to get people to know, like, and trust you. And so if you use your podcast as a lead generator that builds your mailing list, that gets people to trust you, you can make money by getting clients uh, who are your, also your listeners. And I think that's a really great way to do it for a lot of people. It's a long game, but I mean, making any real money in business is a long game, right? Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and I have to say that was smashing. Oh, why? Well, oh, said, very good. <laughs> as soon as you said smash, I was like, I gotta sit on this now. Shut yes. up! Don't say anything. That was smashing. That was perfect. No, I, oh. I too, I love a good acronym, and I think that like we are totally aligned on everything you just said about monetization because I believe that. So many people see these huge shows and they are just, I mean, seemingly we don't know the behind the scenes, but it looks like, mm. Hey, they're just getting handed millions of dollars just for existing and for putting this thing out there. And so it's really hard for any podcasters or people that are just getting started to understand the mechanics behind it, especially if you don't come from a business background. It's even harder. I have people in my audience that have podcasts about uh, their doulas and midwives and people mm. that do caregiving coaching and people that are trying to help real estate agents. And so they don't have this mechanics of sponsorships and working with, you know, ad revenue. They're just like, I, it's intimidating because they don't understand it. So I love that you just broke it down so simply and you made it attainable because that is, um, I, I'm so glad to hear that it's not just me that sees that, that we see this across the entire podcast industry that so many people are like, I only get so many downloads. So you had zero downloads before you started getting sponsors. That's incredible. That is so fantastic. Yeah, it's, it was pretty wild. Um, I learned, I mean, I've been freelancing since I was 14, right? So this is like, what's well, like 23 years now, right? Almost 24. And, um, I learned at some point that like people aren't just going to come up and hand you a bag of money. You got to ask for it. And so when I was launching how I built it, um, I knew my audience was WordPress developers uh, originally. Now it's so I've like pivoted. Uh, it was like a long kind of like glacial move over a bunch of years, but I pivoted and I have a really clear different audience now. And even more downloads, uh, which I mean, download is not the metric, but, you know, kind of watching the trend to see how I'm tracking with my current listenership is that's the only way I could do it right now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I had a really clear audience. And so someone reached out, they wanted to like do a backlink thing. And I'm like, oh, I don't do that. But like, if you want to sponsor the first episode of my podcast for 99 bucks, you can. And he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, oh, who else would say yes to this? <laughs> yeah. So I just reached out to a bunch of people and I was like, hey, I'm launching a podcast in the WordPress space. And people are like, yeah, I know you like you. Your work is really good. I'm happy to like duke you a couple hundred bucks to support this project and get it off the ground. Yeah. And this is 
This is so interesting because um, I haven't recently been talking a lot, or I guess I have more recently started talking about sponsorships. Previously, so much of my content and you know teaching to my audience has been about affiliates for bigger programs. So not those mm-hmm. Amazon ones, like, you know, yeah. like, like the bigger programs, like the higher ticket or higher level coaching packages where you can get started because so many people in this audience have spent a lot of like, they've spent thousands of dollars on large coaching packages. So why don't we turn around and sell some of those, sell your mm-hmm. own products, your own services, but sponsorships is one of those areas where it's been a little fuzzy for me. And now you already brought up Justin. I'm going to bring, I have taken his program and started learning from him and Joe, that's actually where we reconnected. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. Program. We're like, Hey, wait, hang on. We need, wait a need minute. to get you on the podcast. <laughs> you. We need to catch up. But in learning about that, like, it's just really a mindset shift because like you said in the beginning, talking about sponsorships, you're like, you got to be able to take those no's and just keep getting, like, keep going until you start getting those yeses. So I hope that that was a gift to other people that are listening because I think that that's so fascinating. But I want to switch gears for a second about, yeah. you know, from sponsorships to more of the automation side. Because I know, so you mentioned Airtable. Are there other tools that you're like, I swear by these tools, these are like the lifeblood of my business? Like, what are those for you? Yeah, make.com, formerly Integromat. Uh, this is a competitor to Zapier. Okay. And I like it, you know, I, I'm not one of these people who's like, I go for the cheapest tool. I go for the best tool. Yeah. Uh, and make is almost uh 100% kind of what Zapier is there's a couple okay. of missing things um but it's also like 90% cheaper right okay so like i was having this conversation with somebody who's like i'm not switching like i pay for software and i was like yes but the really wealthy don't get wealthy by wasting money right mm. like knowing that make.com does everything zapier does for me at 90% of the price, like I can't as a good business, as a prudential business owner, right? I can't uh, ignore that. And so mm-hmm. I love Make. I think it's a little bit more visual than Zapier. Um, I do think Zapier is a little bit easier though, and you get five automations for free. So, okay. um, you know, maybe try Zapier first because the the I think the reason it's more expensive is because the integrations are a little bit tighter. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for those who don't know, I am I have a background in software engineering, so I kind of think this way. Um, and so make is really easy. It was really easy for me to get started. Um, that said, uh, so make uh, Airtable are really the two big ones as far as automations go. I also have like a bunch of Mac specific stuff. Hazel is an app that does like file management. So, for example, uh, one thing is when I download the files from Riverside, so I Mm -hmm. use Riverside to record, and when I download the files, I have a Hazel automation that looks for files downloaded from Riverside and then puts those files into a folder with the episode number and the guest name. And so it kind of automatically organizes, and then when I add the instructions... It automatically moves it into Dropbox and emails my editor. So again, like I said, when I'm done recording, I'm really, really done. Like I make a few edit notes and then I never see the episode again until it shows up in my podcast app. Wow. So, but, uh, but make is, is really the linchpin of a lot of that stuff. And I'm happy to walk through kind of how automation works because some of the things I'm describing sounds complicated. I have been doing this for a long time. My first automation was not this complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Walk us through. Well, like, like give us all the details. Like I'm salivating over here. I'm like, tell us all the things, all the things. Because just hearing you say again, you record and then it's, it's go, it goes into, it vanishes into thin air and then it appears in your podcast app. We have to know how you're doing this. Yes. Okay. So I will start you with what I think every podcaster who books guests needs to use, and that's Calendly. Cal- Savvy Cal, one of those, right? An automatic scheduler. 
And it's because you do the time zone dance, right? I'm in Eastern daylight time, right? Eastern time. Uh, Crystal, I think you're in Central. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and I, I, I think I know where you are, but like I talk to people in Arizona and like sometimes they're in Pacific and sometimes they're oh, in mountain. Yes. And- you know, sometimes they're just like their own time or whatever, <laughs> yes. right? Like they're Arizona's standing like, still in time. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't know what's like the, <laughs> the best thing about Arizona is that most of the state moves time zones instead of clocks, except for like this one tiny town uh, or like county inside Arizona, which changes the clocks. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you live there, you're on like Arizona time zone. Wow. Bonkers. Anyway. <laughs> Don't ever deal with that, right? That's one thing that you can easily take off your plate. Uh, But the second step is, I think, an often overlooked one. Because when someone fills out my Calendly link, it automatically creates an entry in Airtable. And Airtable is where my podcast planner lives. I have a Kanban board view. So like, you can connect it to Trello if you don't want to use Airtable or ClickUp or maybe Notion. I chose Airtable over Notion and continue to because Notion's automations are, they leave me wanting. Uh, But I think you can get information from Calendly to Notion. Uh, So wherever you plan your podcast, also you're planning your podcast, right? Like you have a planner that keeps track of the episodes. This is another thing that saves you a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, But once it's there, I kind of check my schedule daily to make sure I, I am at least four to six episodes ahead of schedule. I know where I got to fill in solo episodes and things like that. And Calendly also handles all of the uh, reminder emails, right? So it's like, hey, tomorrow, one hour from now. I also have it send a follow-up email. This is why I picked Calendly over Savvy Cal. They do the follow-up email, or they did when I evaluated it. And it says, hey, thanks so much for coming out on the show. If you are willing, send me your address. I'd love to send you like a a thank you note. And also, can you upload your headshot to this Dropbox, right? Because like collecting the headshot is, you know, probably half (laughs) half the people don't do it, right? So, but like saying just like click this link and upload it here, that has, that has gotten things a lot better for me. Uh, So that process, there's a lot of steps. In one connection, Calendly to whatever your planner is, Trello, Airtable, Notion, whatever. So make that and you're probably saving yourself a couple of hours a week at least, right? And then there's a lot of stuff that happens on the back end after we record. So again, I record in Riverside. Uh, I this, is, this might change. This will almost definitely change because Descript or Descript, I learned it's Descript, um, bought Squadcast, which is a Descript, com- or which is a Riverside competitor. So it just doesn't make sense for me to pay for both. But either way, I record the episode and then I download both sides of my audio, my audio, the guest's audio. Hazel automatically puts them in a folder in Dropbox called pre-production. Then I go and I, so during the interview, I'm taking notes, edit notes and things like that. So I don't have to go back and listen. I'll say like, oh, there was a curse word here. We try not to curse on the show. I like that clean reading. Uh, And I I listen to podcasts with my kids. I assume a lot of people who listen to my show, listen to podcasts with my kids and I curse enough. They don't hear, they don't need to hear other people cursing. (laughs) Uh, um, So I will create a text file. What this is, this is kind of a silly thing. Once Hazel detects there are four files in the episode's pre-production folder, that's going to be my audio, the guest's audio, the cold open, right? Which is like me doing the recap that I record uh, after the interview and the instructions file. It automatically moves it into the needs editing folder in -hmm. Dropbox. Okay, this is I'm I'm really going to get into the weeds here and I want you, dear listener, to know that this is going to sound really complicated, but it's just a couple of connections that make a lot. It's like a ripple effect. I'm throwing one rock into the pond and a bunch of things are happening. So just think this is one rock being thrown in the pond. When that folder gets moved into the needs editing folder, 
make is watching that folder. And I make sure that every folder has the episode number in it. This is important because make grabs that episode number, looks it up in Airtable, and updates the status to out for edit. Mm. When that happens, my editor gets an email. Hey, Joel, there's a new episode in Dropbox, and then a link to the folder. Then Joel knows to upload two versions of that, an ads version and an ads free version, ad support and ad free, uh, to the production folder. And again, Make is watching the production folder. He knows to include the episode number. And when a new episode hits the production folder, Make updates Airtable and says, ready for publish is the status. And then two emails go out, one to my VA saying, hey, a new episode's ready for publish. Here's the show notes document, which is automatically generated from the Calendly link in the beginning. And another email goes out to my transcriptionist and says, hey, a new episode is ready to be transcribed. And by the time my VA publishes, we have the transcription and she uploads everything to Transistor. And then uploads uh, and then updates the WordPress site. So all of that happens because I did some pre-work. During the interview, I'm taking a lot of notes. I'm uh, marking links I want to include in the show notes so my VA knows to find them. I'm timestamping things like the ads break because my ads are dynamically inserted now. I'm timestamping things like edits. and. Then once the the episode is recorded, I write down the instructions. I send them off to Joel, my editor. And after that, again, I don't see it until. It's magic. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't even really. And this is the beauty of it, right? Because for a while I was uh, checking every, I was listening to the whole episode, right? There were a couple of times where. Like I, I accidentally hot mic'd myself. I like said, I said some things that I would stand by, but I don't want to put out like that. You know, it's like people don't want to, people aren't listening to me for that sort of view. Yeah. Um, and like my editor forgot to cut that out, but you know, a couple of bumps along the way, things are usually are super smooth sailing. I don't even check their work anymore. Yeah. Like, and like, uh, so it really is a super hands off process for me. And it's, it's been working for me for years. I keep my VA is in the Philippines and I keep increasing her pay because I know I pay her like well above what uh, like people in her skill set and location get, because I, if she left me, I would be lost. Yes, <laughs> well, I don't know what exactly. I'm going to do now. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think it's, so interesting. First of all, thank you for walking us through that because I know, like you said, people hear automation and they're immediately like, <gasps> I don't know how to do that. Or that sounds so complicated. And even you throwing in that you do have a background in, you know, developing. So you have a higher level education or experience and skill set than most people listening to this episode today. But also everything that you just said, I understood. And I don't have a, you know, a skill set in automation or developing or these fancy things, but I have listened to enough shows and I've had enough headaches myself in booking guests. And I'm so glad that you started with the Calendly because that was the very first thing I ever automated. I was overbooking myself. I was like, I will never forget. There was one day where I really wasn't feeling great. And I had four interviews back to back four hour long interviews and they were all funky. And I didn't, there was not like this, I Calendly will give you a buffer time. Like mm -hmm. you absolutely need to use this, whether it's five yes. minutes or 20 minutes or throw, like whatever and, it is. Like, and a maximum oh. number of uh, bookings per day. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I totally screwed up. What are you talking about, Joe? I didn't know. Like, I was just like, sure. Wednesday this time. Yeah, sure. Put it yeah. on the Google calendar. Yeah, this time. Sure. And then all of a sudden that day came and I was like, I really don't feel that great, but it's okay. I only have one interview. And then I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, mm. what did I just, like, I did this to myself. There was no one to blame, but myself. So I got so frustrated. So that is absolutely step number one. 
start with Calendly. If you are scheduling your own guest, outsource that immediately. Calendly is affordable. You can absolutely afford it. And it is something, is there still a, a free version of Calendly? I feel like I've been paying for it for years. I know I, I, I paid for like the max as soon as I could. Cause like, yeah. you can also like do like paid bookings, right? Yes. Like on the, so um, I think there is a free, I'm pretty sure there's still a free tier though. Yeah. Um, that gives you, oh, always free. Yeah. Connect one calendar, create an act, create one event type. Right. So perfect. Dip your toes in the water. Right. You yes. have a calendar. Right. The re oh, the reason I had to upgrade was because I also wanted to include like my wife's work schedule and like yes. my kid's school schedule. Right. Cause that was the other thing that was happening. It was like, it was only seeing my appointments. And then I was like, oh, but I got to go pick Teresa up from school. Right. Yes. Uh, so now there's, uh, and I'll tell you, right. So I tried automating this and then I was like, this doesn't make any, like my toxic trait is I try to automate things that don't need to be automated. <laughs> and so I had an automation that was like looking at my wife's work schedule and then doing the math to figure out like, oh, well, if, if she's at work and there's school, then I just automatically block off like 2.30 to 7.30 PM. Uh, and I was like, this is dumb. <laughs> I just, I know that uh, I'll just block certain days off on my calendar to, yeah. to record. And I, I, yeah. that's what I know and can control. So, um, but yeah, I think a lot of people hear automation and they get nervous, Yeah. But, but I'll tell you this, are you, do you write a check for every bill that you pay or does your mortgage or rent automatically come out of your account? Does your electric bill automatically come out of your account? If if you said yes to any of those, then you are already automating. Yes. Oh, so it might drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, even yeah. Netflix and all of your subscriptions, like exactly everything, like everything yeah. is, you probably don't even have cash in your house at this point. Like it's all right. digital. It's all automated. And, you know, we're kind of living, <laughs> we're living in this world where, Probably 10 years ago, automation was super scary, even though there were tools out there to use it, but they've been so fine-tuned and refined and they're used yeah. by super large organizations. I think that 2020, like, you know, and everything of, you know, people working hybrid, working at home, like it kind of sped us up digitally by a few years because all of these tools somehow got better in a lot of ways. And I think that that is one of the great things that's kind of stuck around is, the improved ability to have more automations or have just APIs and integrations in places where it wasn't readily available. And so um, I would love for you to talk about, um, is there any part of your processes that use AI where it's hands off completely? Like, and I don't mean like, you know, we have Zapier and Make and all those, mm. but any like other parts of your process, like maybe in the planning stage or something like, cause people have just been asking me so much about AI. So I'd love to get everybody's take on how they're using that in their production process. Yeah, this is a great question and very well-timed because I just finished recording a course for LinkedIn Learning called Generative AI for Podcasters. Awesome. Uh, the main place that I use AI is in two ways. One is transcription. Uh, automatic transcription. So I have one before my transcriptionist actually creates like a proper no errors, proper links and things like that uh, version, because I do like to search for that, especially if I'm like, oh, I think we talked about this at this point, or like, I really want to use that quote for the cold open. Like what, what timestamp was that after, after edit. Right. Um, and so I really use it for that. And then there are a couple of tools I've been experimenting with that I'm probably going to settle on one very soon. Uh, and they are uh, Capsho, Cast Magic, and Swell AI. And they all kind of do the same thing. They transcribe your episode, they summarize it, and then they create shareable assets for you. And I have been told I'm a very good writer. Uh, so I write a lot and I write um, pretty well. So I end up rewriting a lot of the stuff that it produces, but the there's a quote at this time that we think is good, or here's the here's the basis for a Twitter thread. That's the stuff I love because mm -hmm. 
I don't really think about that stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, there's the stuff I remember to write down in the notes. But if I'm really into the conversation, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. totally. I'm probably not. I, I want to be engaged, right? There's the balance between being engaged and writing down the important stuff for later. And tools like Cast Magic and Swell AI and Cap Show make it so that you can remain engaged and still get some reminders of what you actually talked about in the episode. Right. I found that like Cap Show probably does the best job of figuring out what the episode's about. Uh, but de uh, deriving assets from those is a little bit confusing. I think that Cast Magic and Swell AI do a better job of making it really like here is a Twitter thread. Take this, copy it and paste it into Typefully or whatever or Hype. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I've been messing around with a few of those. I got the lifetime deal from AppSumo for Cast Magic. And I'm always suspect of lifetime deals. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they've been improving at a pretty rapid clip so it sounds like they've taken that cash infusion they got from the app sumo sale and have been investing it into engineering which has been really cool uh yeah. so that's that's mostly where i use it but the let me tell you the thing that i've really loved about it lately uh i've, I've been using chat gpt4 which who knows this episode could come out tomorrow and it could be outdated already right. like things are just moving so quickly <laughs> Uh, so I've been using ChatGPT and I've been writing prompts like this. Uh, I have a podcast that targets busy, busy solopreneur and creator parents who want to save time in their business by doing less of the process stuff. Can you give me two listener avatars for this podcast? Make one male and one female. The results I got from that were astounding. Like, like. These people were clear as day. Yeah. David's a 35-year-old stay-at-home dad who has two kids, 10 and 7. He works on his podcast in the evenings after his wife comes home from work and the kids are in bed. And um, Jenny is a single mom with a 7-year-old. She has a full-time job, but she does her podcast on the side as a way to make extra money. And I'm just like, I can see these. I can see David. Yes. I can see Jenny. And then I ask follow-up questions. What kind of questions would David have for me if he listened to my podcast? What are the problems that keep Jenny up at night? And the answers I get are incredible. And I'm not going to say it's better than actual listener research, but if you don't have a way to get your listeners or you want to test the waters first, like if you're starting from, from zero or near zero, it's an incredible tool that helps you really niche down your podcast and figure out who you're talking to. And that's really what helps your show grow, right? Not everybody is Joe Rogan. Only Joe Rogan is Joe Rogan, right? Uh, you can't just talk to everybody. You need to have a, a mission statement in mind. Who do you help and how do you help them? And if you don't know that or you don't know where to start, ChatGPT and other AI tools can be really, really helpful for that. Yeah. I think that that is like such a, such a gift and like a beautiful way that you explain that because we've talked about AI and I've talked about the processes and the production part, but I love that you talked about, it's like the mindset, the marketing, the market research of using it to take your podcast from something super generic, possibly if you're speaking yeah. to an, you know, a generic audience and making it a lot more succinct, a lot more specific, because that is something that this audience struggles with because they're like, but you're supposed to talk to everybody. I don't want to niche down. And I think a lot of people have that um, in the very beginning of their journeys anyway, but it is something that can be so powerful. And I love it when people share their prompts because I'm like, Ooh, that's a good idea. I'm going to try that next yeah. time. So, so I, I have a blog post on this. I'll share it. Um, awesome. I've, Perfect. I've created a landing page for your listeners over at podcastliftoff.com slash profit, uh, the way that you spell profit in the show. I'll yeah. probably make it redirect both ways. Um, but yeah, it'll have uh, my automation, some automation templates, and it'll have a link to this blog post as well. Because I think that uh, that's just so powerful. And um, I get it. I totally get it. Like niching down is scary. 
right? Because you're like, oh, I'm excluding people. I'm trying to make money though, or I'm trying to yeah. get as many listeners as possible. But let me tell you the I mentioned like the journey of my downloads before. My podcast was very, very popular very quickly, like 100,000 downloads in less than nine months uh, for a guy who had no idea what he was doing in 2016. Um, my first pa- podcast launched in 2012, and it was really bad. So it was like we had five hosts and four downloads. Uh, so someone wasn't listening. Um, but <laughs> uh, this one, because I had such a specific audience, WordPress developers who want to launch a business but don't know how, who are hearing the successes and failures of established WordPress developer business owners, got me sponsors, got me a bunch of downloads. Then I thought, well, I want to try to appeal to more people. So I was like, let's just go WordPress businesses instead of developers. Let's just go general businesses Let, like YOLO, right? I don't, YOLO was popular back then. Um, <laughs> 37, I, got you, Joe. I really I got I can't you. pull that off. But, um, and guess what? My downloads dipped. I went from like being number 23 in, uh, in Apple podcast technology charts to like whew, 2000. Because uh, I was in, I I moved from niche and topic, so then I was like, I gotta get, I gotta get back, and so then I decided, um, instead of general business, I'm gonna talk to creators. Actually, I'm gonna talk to solopreneurs. Actually, I'm gonna talk to busy solopreneurs, uh, and like the parents thing is unspoken, but it comes up so much, yeah, that like I just can't help but make it a part of my identity and and part of the fabric of the show, and now I'm getting like seventy thousand downloads a month again. Right. Like I've, I've, it went from lots of downloads dipped and then, and back up again. So niching will always help you because it gives you that engaged audience that your message resonates with. Yeah. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh. I feel like there's so many mic drop moments in this episode (laughs) today. And so many things like we're going to have to have you back on the show, Joe, because this was fantastic. It was fantastic. So I have a few rapid fire questions that I want to wrap up with. So don't be nervous. I promise they're not scary. They're not, they're not trivia night hard. Okay. We're not going to get there yet. (laughs) Okay. So what piece of advice would you give to a brand new podcaster? Define your mission statement first. I kind of said this earlier, but answer these three questions. Who do I help? How do I help them? And how does each episode further that mission? Like, how does each episode drive home the fact that I'm helping them solve this specific problem? That's awesome. That's really good. Okay. The next one is a two-part question. All right. Who is your dream podcast you would love to be on? And who is the dream podcast guest you would love to interview? Oh man, <laughs> this feels trivia night hard. Um, so whose podcast would I love to be on? I know they don't have guests, so this is like kind of a cop out, I think. But stuff you should know, they were just like my first love. Um, I love that podcast. I think those guys are so funny, and I don't know what I would talk about with them, but it would just be a blast. Like I'd learn from like some OG podcasters. Yes. Uh, And who is my dream guest? This, the chains move on this a lot. Um, But I would love to talk to Andrew Warner. Uh, He, his book, Stop Asking Questions, really helped me level up my podcast and the kind of research I did for guest interviews. um, And, and it, it really helped me build a better story around the interviews instead of just saying like so who are you tell us who you are and what you do right like so i think it's it's him him or lindsey graham not the senator the guy who hosts like uh history daily and a bunch of other history podcasts for wondering um his his voice is just fantastic so i mean i would talk to him about storytelling in a non-fiction setting uh and then he could just talk because his voice is fantastic Oh, I was going to say, I heard him speak. I think he was at Podcast Movement Evolutions in Vegas earlier yeah. this year. And I yeah. heard him and I was like, this is delightful. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, this is delightful. <laughs> yeah, he's great. His, I can't recommend his, like, if you want to know how to weave a good story into like seemingly mundane things, like 
I don't know, the founding of Netflix. Like, it's a cool story, but like, man, the picture that he paints is incredible. So if you want like a masterclass in storytelling, listen to that show. That's awesome. We're going to link to those in the show notes. It was great. So my last question is, do you consider yourself a perfectionist? No, uh, I don't. I used to, uh, but kids change everything. <laughs> and because, you know, when I was single and had all the time in the world, I could I could stay up late until two or three in the morning getting that CSS just right or editing out all these little imperfections. And then like kids happened and I was like, man, if I want to do anything, 80 percent for most things is good. Is, is good enough, right? And I'm not saying half, I don't half-ass things, but I understand that done is better than perfect. And when something needs to be perfect, uh, then I, I can invest my time in that because I'm not spending all of my time on minutia that doesn't have to be. Yeah. Oh, this was so awesome. Like I said, so many mic drop moments. And I think that you gave... So many listeners, lots to think about when it comes to their automations and their processes. And I know that this is something that you do, like you help podcasters with this. So can you tell us a little bit about what it would look like to, you know, contact you or what the next step is if there's somebody that's listening and they're like, okay, like Joe, please help me. I want to record and just wake up on the day that my episode airs and it is right there. It's ready to go. Yeah. So I'll say this right at the top. If you want to join my mailing list, that's the best way to kind of learn my best tips. Uh, everything you need will be over at podcastliftoff.com slash profit. But if you want to do this yourself, here's what you do. Make a list of everything you do for every episode. Leave nothing out. Don't, oh, well, I record with this and then I edit with this. No, no, no. How do you find guests? How do you book guests? What do you do between the time you book the guest and the time you get on the recording with the guest? What do you do before you start recording? What do you do after you start recording? Literally everything from whatever, right? From coming up with episode ideas to promoting them on social media. Then I want you to Marie Kondo style, circle only the things that bring you joy. Only the things that you need and want to do. I'm going to give you a harsh truth. All you need to do is talk. If you want to book the, I book the guests still, right? Because I want to make sure I'm booking guests that, that fall in line with my values. So that's if you want to find and book guests, but even then you can like make a list of names and then have a VA, like do some research on, on them. Right. And then have them book in Calendly. So Circle the things that bring you joy. Everything else a robot can do or another human being can do. So that's what I recommend. In fact, you know what? The uh, form that you'll fill out will give you uh, two free things. It'll give you a list to my like podcast audit framework thing. So you can do this by yourself. And it'll give you a list to my uh, some automation templates I've created. So you're not starting from scratch. Oh, look at you. Just give it. This had everything. So it had Game of Thrones. <laughs> we talked about smashing things. We talked about, I mean, we worked in so many awesome, like we're ready for trivia night. And I think the Super audience, <laughs> the audience yes. is ready for some automations because they're like, okay, I'm going to run to go grab this. So give us that link one more time, Joe. Podcastliftoff.com slash profit. Profit will be spelt uh, your way, but also my way or the highway. (laughs) highway. Now I have the Limp Biscuit song stuck in my head. (laughs) We don't need to bring Fred Durst into this. Okay, we don't. We we don't need to. My 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 hat is forwards. And I'm too old to wear it backwards now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now I'm like going through the Rolodex of Lit Biscuit songs and I blame you. Like this is I'm totally. Sorry. My apologies. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my God. This was fantastic, Joe. And I'm going to have a link to everything in the show notes that we talked about today. But I so appreciate you sharing your knowledge, your wisdom, your time with us today. This was fantastic. So thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. I had an absolute blast. Okay, I just have one question to ask. Are you motivated to figure out how to make this system work? I know, me too. It was actually 
this conversation with Joe that inspired me because I've been looking at, you know, I need to hire a VA. I want someone to help me do some of the back end processes of my podcast in my business. And this was the conversation that really pushed me over the edge because I've been kind of, you know, wavering and taking my time and dragging my feet to make it happen. And this was a conversation that I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I have since hired someone that is helping me short term and, you know, working a few hours here and there in my business every single week. And it's made all the difference. And I've already said, okay, we're increasing your hours because this is incredible to hand things off of my plate. I have already been able to make more money and dedicate my time to more revenue generating, lead generating strategies in my business because I have the brain power and the capacity now to do these strategic things that I didn't have time to do before. So please go follow Joe, like go listen to all the things. Like I love that he is an expert in Zapier, Zapier. This is like one of those words. I never know how to say it, but it is such an underestimated tool on the incredible things that it can do. I am planning on spending some time in 2024 to figure out like How can I make this work to my benefit? How can I make it to the dreamy things that Joe talked about? I mean, think about it. Think about this for a second. What if you could just record your show and then it's published? Like then someone else, like you hand it off to someone else and they take over the whole thing and you have a published piece of content And you can work on those bigger pieces of maybe guesting on more podcasts to grow your audience or working on, you know, that brand new lead magnet or that course or that membership or whatever else you're trying to do in your business. So I want you to go check out Joe, follow him on Instagram, go look at all the cool things that he's doing because he is someone that is going to change this industry. And I think that he is doing absolutely incredible things. And like I said, Joe, if you're listening, trivia night, we got to make it happen because I think we would have so much fun. But that's all I have for you today. So if you're brand new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button wherever you are listening. And as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.